Hello world. The Korean manufacturer Hyundai have come a long way from making economy cars like these in the 90s and the 2000s to having their own luxury brand, the Genesis. But unfortunately, they still haven't made a car that appeals to car guys. High horsepower, high tech, high traction, high speed at a low cost, or relatively a low cost. Today we'll talk about why they need to and why they can make such a car. Ooh, a BRZ or BRZ. First, let's talk about their attempts so far. So first with the uh, Genesis Coupe in 2009. This was a respectable first attempt back in 2009. So that's 10 years ago with their two different engine layouts. So the i4 2 liter turbo making about 210 initially and ending at about 274 horsepower and the 3.8 V6 making 306 initially and up to 348 at the final version. And yes, yeah, it's definitely a decent car. It's come down quite a lot in price now that now that it's 10 years old. So the V6 would make a decent enough track car but it's not something you would call a well, Evo or a M3 or a Supra level of a car or a GTR level of a car because it's quite heavy for what it is it probably I think it weighs around 3300 pounds for 200 horsepower four cylinder turbo and about 3500 pounds for the V6 version I mean it's not heavy heavy but it's not very light for the amount of power and amount of performance that it has and secondly the Hyundai Veloster Turbo and the Veloster Turbo N same with the i30N these are the 2.0T making about 270 to I think 300 horsepower front wheel drive vehicles so while these cars are great, they're still front wheel drive. So you compare these cars to other cars like the Ford Focus ST or the Honda Civic Type R, which are decent cars, but still it's not the Evo or the STI or the Focus RS. And the third and the last one is the Genesis G70 and the Kia Stinger. As most of us know, Kia is owned by Hyundai, so they, they make the same car. The G70 and the Kia Stinger, they're basically the same vehicle with different badges. And I, I do think these cars are probably the best cars that Hyundai has made so far. Nice design and luxurious interior and decent power the i4 again i4 turbo makes about 250 horsepower weighs around 3500 pounds v6 turbo 3.3 makes about 370 horsepower but also weighs like 3800 pounds to in some cases over 4000 pounds that's the main weakness of this car i think it's just too heavy I mean the GTR is about 3,800 pounds but it makes 500 plus horsepower and has a very clever all-wheel drive suspension, uh oh, all-wheel drive train. So compared to that the G70 and the Kia Stinger is a little bit lacking. Obviously it's a much cheaper car but still I'd rather them make a all-out G70 that makes 500 horsepower and Costs about 80k, 90k, and that would that would be acceptable, I think, because the GTR is over 100k, and it still sells. Although that's GTR is also very outdated now. Okay, 
Now on to the reason why they haven't built these cars. The main reason is the cost. These performance cars, they cost a lot of money to develop and they don't sell well. So what's the point of having a car that doesn't sell and the margins are very small as a company that's trying to make profit? Hyundai knows this because it's doing well financially. And the second reason ties into this because most people aren't car guys. They don't care if the performance car makes 500 horsepower from a very nice sounding V6 Turbo or a V8 or a V10 with a very smart limited slip differential. All they want is a car that looks nice and feels luxurious and expensive while consuming the least amount of gas. And all manufacturers know this, including Hyundai. And that's why everybody's just in producing cars that are boring. Boring. <laughs> but still, you need a car that is gonna carry your brand image. For example, you don't see Honda Civic, oh no, not Honda Civic, don't want to offend those Honda Civic owners. You don't want to have a Honda Fit on the main model or the main display at the Honda booths. You're gonna have an NSX on there. So similarly, Hyundai needs their Halo car they can put on their displays, on their main display at motor shows instead of putting their G70. I mean, the G70 is nice, but it's not the NSX or a GTR or an LFA. They need a Hyundai LFA. That's what they need. So what I think they should build and why I think they can. So Hyundai now in 2019 is pretty well involved in motorsports. They're doing really well in WRC. World Rally Championship with their i20 WRC and they're also involved in some touring car races like TCR which isn't as popular as WRC but still they're they're getting in the mix now so with all this uh, motorsport heritage and data from all this all these motorsport events I think what they should build is the Hyundai Veloster Evolution and this is probably the most likely car to come out of Hyundai just because it's gonna be a hot hatch that's all-wheel drive meaning it's a car that's already being made in the Ford Focus RS so they can give us a Ford Focus RS competitor that would be great that 2.0T making about 300 horsepower and the clever all-wheel drive from the Rally Championship. And we have an Evo 11 from Hyundai because Mitsubishi is busy making an SUV Eclipse. And the second card I think they should build is the Genesis Coupe Superleggera. The Genesis Coupe, when it came out in 2009, did have some promising features, but it was too heavy. So the ideal sports car would be something like if the Genesis Coupe and the Toyota 86 had a baby. So the lightness of the 86 and the, its suspension and the engine from a 2.0T Genesis making about 280 horsepower. And now you do have a winner from Hyundai. You know, Toyota and Hyundai should just collaborate and give us that car. You know, like since Toyota likes collaborating with other companies for their engines anyways. Or Hyundai could just build their Kia GT4 Stinger concept. Before the Kia Stinger came out, there was a concept version of a two-door coupe that weighed about 3,000 pounds and had 300 horsepower from that 2.0T. That's exactly that car that I just talked about. The lightweight two-door turbo car with about 300 horsepower. Just make that Hyundai. Don't make it, don't let it just waste in the concept version. Just make it. 
And another thing is that the Hyundai Genesis Coupe had uh, plans for its replacement and there were rumors that the replacement for the Hyundai Genesis Coupe was going to be divided into two different models. So one for Hyundai, which is going to be a lightweight coupe, and the other for their luxury brand Genesis. And it's supposed to be more of a luxury GT car. And I hope both of them come out and hopefully the one from one for Hyundai is the lightweight one. So performance cars in 2019 aren't the most sensible choice both for the manufacturer and the consumer. But we all grew up watching videos of the Aventador, the M3, the GTRs, and the Skyline GTRs, and the Supras or the Mustangs. So we do want these performance cars to continue on. And while it's not the most sensible choice, if you want to prove that your performance can now compete with the rest of the group, you do have to produce a car that can compete with the rest of the group. And I do think Hyundai is going in the right direction with their Kia Stinger and the Genesis G70. Especially that Genesis G70, I quite like it. And let's see what they come up with in the next five years. Maybe they will give us that lightweight coupe with the 300 horsepower that everybody can buy. Until next time. <sighs>